And good morning to everyone. First, I'd like to say how, 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 how pleased I am to be here. It's been a wonderful occasion to meet old friends and to make, make new friends. I'd like to thank SD for the opportunity to share with you what I have learned from almost a half a century of teaching and writing about typography and culture. As a pr professor of graphic design at Watson Guptill Publications, teaching typography was my prime, prime interest. At the same time, my secondary responsibility, which I took upon myself, was to make sure the students were aware of our rich cultural heritage. How I accomplished this is what I would like to share with you today. So let's begin with the title, Typography and Culture, and beginning with culture. According to the dictionary, culture is the arts and other manifestations of intellectual achievements. I believe that graphic design visual communication, commercial art, or whatever you want to call it, qualifies as an intellectual achievement and therefore as a culture with a long, rich heritage. Typography, on the other hand, presented a slight problem. According to the same dictionary, typography is the art of setting, arranging printed types. Well, if we go by that definition, we must begin our discussion with Gutenberg in the 15th century. And for me, that was rather limiting and also much too late in the evolution of our profession. So I prefer to think of typography more broadly as communicating communication through letter forms and as an important part of our culture. So where does our culture begin? How did we get to where we are today? And what does a bent twig have to do with today's topic? Well, I'll tell you. I begin our culture, cultural heritage, began a long time ago. One could make the case that our story begins in prehistoric times when some anonymous primitive hunter bent a twig in order to visually mark a trail. Think of it as early signage or an example of a visual language. Other examples of our early visual language can be found on the walls of prehistoric caves like Lascaux. With the strange graphic markings and symbols and an ox. Now what does an ox have to do with our culture? Another wonderful part of our story is the use of the phonetic alphabet by the ancient Phoenicians. As a nation of traders and merchants, the Phoenicians needed a simplified writing form that would allow them to keep better business records. So around 1200 BCE, the Phoenicians developed a new concept in written communication. They realized that they had about 22 major sounds in their language. So they decided to assign a symbol to represent each sound, at that time a revolutionary idea. They began with a sound found at the beginning of their word for an ox, Aleph. So when assigning a symbol that, for that sound, they used the existing symbol for the ox, which by now was just the head and horns. This later became our letter A. Next, they did the same thing for the, for the second, um, for the sound at the beginning of their word for house. Beth. This became our B. Most symbols were based, uh, the process was continued until all the sounds in their language had symbols. Most symbols were based upon a common elements such as water, door, fish, hand, eye, mouth. There will be more about this subject later when we get to the six projects that I will be introducing. Whoops. Here we see the evolution of our alphabet on stone tablets from cuneiform, Phoenician, Greek, and finally to the Roman letter forms as inscribed on the Trajan columns in the 2nd century AD. 
In addition to the bent twigs and stone tablets, here are just a few more cultural landmarks worth noting. Illuminated manuscripts of the Middle Ages, Gutenberg's invention of printing from movable type, an invention that changed history. The evolution of typeface design, there'll be more on that later. An introduction of advertising in the 19th century, for better or worse. Graphic design as a, recognition, a recognizable profession in the 20th century. And of course, the digital explosion for all media, type, print, web, video, mobile devices, technology, technologies with which you are too familiar, all a rich part of our culture. Now the question is, how does one bring this knowledge to the students when one's primary responsibility is teaching typography? My solution was to integrate culture and typography into the graphic design projects. My I created a one semester course at the Cooper Union called Typo One, an introduction to typography. The course was built around two of my books, Designing with Type and 30 Centuries of Graphic Design. Today, I would like to share with you six of the 12 projects from Designing with Type that I believe are relevant to today's topic. The six projects range from the basics to experimental, from serious to humorous. However, before reviewing the six projects, I must put all this into context by walking you through the early classes of the semester where the fundamentals of typography are introduced, a necessary prerequisite to the working on the projects. Students come to class with their printed copies of Designing with Type. We, I do this because if you're not well organized, you leave it up to the students to pick up the book. It could be, you, you could lose a whole, a whole uh, day of classes because they don't have the book. I also prefer that the students read the chapters that I will cover. We read the chapters in class so that way I know that they are being read by the students. If you give it as a homework assignment, they may or may not read it. So all of these things one develops over the year of teaching, tightening up a course, this worked very well for me. So we start with the base of typography, and these are spreads from the book itself. So we start with the origins of the alphabet, and you see in, uh, we start from the pictographs or pictograms to uh, right through the basics. Then we go through the, on the right hand side, you can see going from again from the Phoenician all the way through to Gutenberg and the printed types. So in four pages, say roughly three columns of type, they have the basics of the origins of the type. Next we go to the type terminology, which, is, which we discuss again in the class. How typeface names came around, type styles, the various type styles of typefaces. Then you get the fonts of type and the um, type measurements, the traditional display sizes, and then how the X height affects the various type sizes. Then you get into line spacing, letting or line spacing, letter spacing, and then you have the five. We go into the five classic typefaces. Designing with type is based on the introduction of five classic typefaces, which the students have to work with for the first semester, with exceptions made when they can make a great case why they want to use another typeface. But if the students can design with these five typefaces, this is the history of the evolution of typeface design. Garamond, old style, Baskerville, well, Garamond, French, old style, Baskerville, English, transitional, Padoni, Italian, modern, century expanded, American, uh, Egyptian, slab serif, Helvetica, Swiss. So if you ask any designer to name 10 or 20 of their favorite typefaces, you'll find probably two or three of those names on their list. So this focuses the students. That way they don't have to think about, there are so many ugly typefaces today as you probably know. So this way, it gives them a solid foundation in what makes what is a well-designed, uh, elegant typeface. So again, you get the characteristics of the typefaces, the five typefaces, what, what, what you look for to, to uh, identify a typeface. And you get an overview in six pages of each of these five typefaces, 
This is Garamond, what makes Garamond Garamond, a small bio at the, at the bottom. The display type with the, um, the, the significant letter forms that are different than others. Introduction of small caps. Then you get the, the traditional display sizes, and then you show the, the, the text sizes with varying amounts of line spacing or linen. And then, of course, the same thing for Baskerville, Doni, Century, Alberta. At the end, this is all on the first day. This is all on the first day of class, four hour class. Then, at, in the book, they have these, four, these five typefaces, and they have to identify the five typefaces based on what we've already discussed. To help the students out, I usually give them one hint. I tell them which one is Helvetica. That's very generous of me, I think. Now the projects, the six projects. What I will be showing you are solutions by the students from the Cooper Union, where I, where I taught the course for 30, for 30 years, and where I give workshops around the world. This is in 2012, Ljubljana in Slovenia. This is Gutenberg, Sweden and just recently in Athens, Greece. Now, what I want to bring to your attention is when I was, if you're over 40 or 50, maybe it's even 60, when I was a student at Cooper Union, a Yale graduate school, we were predominantly male. 10 male, two female. In teaching for 30 years, I've seen it go from predominantly male to 50-50 to predominantly female. If you look at the classes, Slovenia, no question about it. Gutenberg, Sweden, and Athens, Greece, and I'm sure it's the same thing in, in, in graphic, dis, dis, uh, graphic design schools around the world today, which I think is wonderful. Early letter form project from the Cooper Union. Now, I want to say a few words about the project so you put it into context for you. First of all, this project was started over 30 years ago before computers. So originally, the student, it took the student from copywriting all the way through to the printed piece. So you can see you have the two alphabets, you have the Phoenician alphabet and you have the Greek alphabet. Students had to choose one letter from the alphabet. They had to do research on the letter form with 500 words, write about that letter form. It could be serious, could be funny, didn't matter, as long as they, it made sense. The, fo the format it was a two-color job. Uh, 20, uh, 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. And the, um, the students had to do, oh, they had to write, they had to, in those days, they had to type up the copy, double spaced. They kept one copy with a name on it. The other copy went to a professional proofreader, so the, uh, it would be proofread. They had to do three designs. There are three elements involved. There's like the name Delta, there's the symbol delta, and there's the 500 characters, plus or minus, that they had to write. I wanted each of the designs to be different. I wanted the, each element, if you look at the three designs, the symbol was the most important element, the, the, the display type was the most important element, the text type was the most important element. I would remind them that I know if you want to make something important, make it big. I know that if you, beside making it big, make it red, that usually works. But I said, try to do something beyond the obvious by position, by all different, come up with some different kinds of solutions. The following week, they would bring in the three designs. We have a class critique where everybody, everybody contributes. The nice thing about three designs, when students do one design, if the student's very sensitive and the design, design gets shot down, they can end up in tears. The wonderful thing about three designs, everybody can talk about them. They choose one design that they feel is the best design. They enhance that based on the critique. Meanwhile, the copy comes back from the proofreader with all these strange squiggles and, and proofreader marks, which the students, I feel, have to be familiar with. Now, I know that some places they figure, well, students don't need proofreading marks today because everything's on the computer and for whatever reason. This is a double. This is a double-page spread from the proofs from designing with type, the fifth edition, which was about seven years ago. I am a professional. I designed the book. I laid out the book, and still you look at all those questions. Now you can imagine a student getting this back from the from the publisher, and they have to interpret that. So they go to designing with type, and you have a page which shows all the proofreading marks. So now they take their copy, spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, and 
Spelling mistakes with grammatical errors, you must change. If it's a suggestion and grammatically correct, then the student makes the decision. So that's, that is the, now the students have the, they got to design, and then they have to prepare a mechanical in the olden days. We sent that to the printer, they got proofs back, and then the job was printed, and each student got a folio of the entire class's work with their name on it and the year. Now, this is, the, this is from the Cooper Union, and I'll, I'll go through these rather quickly because we, uh, we're limited in time, and I do have a lot of th images to show you, but I think you'll get an idea of the level. These are second-year students. You get a, an idea of the level of the, of the quality of the designs, and at the end, I'll tell you how you can see some of these in your own leisure. Mem. They, that one's completely letter spaced, all the text, beautifully like a grid work. For me, the readability was not the most important thing. We did talk about the importance of readability, but I gave them great license that the design in this case was, was important. If it's readable, that's almost a plus. And one of my students was from India, and she said, would you mind if I did one of the letters from, from our alphabet? Which I said, no, absolutely no problem, and I believe this is Om. Right? How's my pronunciation? Okay, so, you get the idea for that project. Now, a friend of mine, An Sung Su, who was one of the top designers in Korea, had seen the project, and he, and he asked if, if, it, if I would mind if he gave the project to his students which was kind of strange, because like I have a copyright on, my, on the project. I said, no, I'd be flattered. I wish you would do that. So these are the same project. And you get a difference of, of, of cultural difference in the sophistication of the designs. Second year students. Now the next project, grids, grids for obviously for publication design. I use that as a basis for introducing uh, Gutenberg and, and the, uh, the, the introduction of printing from movable type. So how I did that is I gave them all a standard, a standard um, grid. This, these are the opening squares, by the way, from designing the type. So I gave them the grid. Again, if, I, I try to direct most of the projects. I try to give them very strict guidelines so they don't have to decide, well, maybe I'll do a four-column grid, maybe I'll do a two-column grid. So this way, I just want them to focus on making something work typographically. So for this project, I gave them, I gave them the art. And you have, you have the, the Gutenberg Bible, you see all the parts of, uh, of, of Gutenberg, and they have to work with these elements. And I'll just show you, this is from the book, showing you how different ways the spreads work. There's, this, there's the, using the grid, and that's without the, the grid supporting it. But again, oh, they had to, they, they, I gave them the text, they had to write the heads, and they had to write the captions. So that meant that they had to understand what the images were all about. And we just did the opening, opening spread. Okay, now, visually enhanced quotation is, in this, in this case, the students could choose any quotation they wanted, and typographically, or in some other means, they had to enhance the quotation. I mentioned how important it was that they get a good quotation. I said, if you get a good quotation, even if your design is not very good, the quotation, at least that, will entertain the viewer. If you have a lousy quotation, I don't care how well you design it, there's no way that you're going to save it. So I think you'll find here, now the first ones at Cooper Union, the first ones I'll show you are done by letterpress, because at Cooper Union we were very fortunate to have a, type, um, a metal type shop. So the, the first ones you see will all be done old technology, really old technology. It was, it was an assignment in 30 years of teaching. I never had any student that did not enjoy the experience of setting metal type. It was actually, uh, 
Okay, so again, um, and, and in the book there, there are some of these images, but I'll show you the, the metamorphosis. Uh, Shakespeare, Eto Brute. Now I realize some of these you may not be able to read, but you, you can get, you can, you can see the designs. This is a quotation that talks about not a man, but a cloud in trou trousers. So they simply took white chalk, enough to enhance the quotation. A very simple thing. I love this one by Burroughs. You know, Burroughs did 2001. Blood of Christ, rivers of blood, mountains of blood. Does Christ never get tired of bleeding? And they did it on a shroud. They printed it on a shroud, which seems very appropriate. This is E.E. E. Cummings, One Leaf, One Leanness. I love it when students surprise teachers. The student, had, first of all, this is a metal type. They had to do a comp comprehensive to show me before they can go to the metal type shop. So this student came in with this strange looking thing. And I had to remind her that this is metal type. And metal type, you can't, do, you can't do these things on metal type. So next week she came in with this. What she did, she printed it four times with different colored paper and cut it all apart and did a, a, a collage of it. So I mean, it's wonderful when, you know, what, what, and by, your, by, your, by your students you will be taught. And again, this is the same idea. Things you cannot do with metal type patterns. This again is a mask. These are actually holes. This is a quotation by Hawthorne, Hawthorne about people sometimes being a mask. And so they made a mask out of the, uh, out of the uh, and this guy was a pretty good artist, and he just did his own illustration. This is a quotation by Aristotle, Samuel Beckett. Quotation about pleats, pleats in a skirt, and just folded the paper to make, to make pleats. And Shakespeare's from King Lear, how, how, how. Now, digitally enhanced, the project given by, by later students in the workshops, these are some of the solutions done, done digitally. This is a very lovely one. Common Sense is Not So Common by Voltaire. I love just the dot, just to finish off the justification. Three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. That's by Albert Einstein. Dreams. This one, this one stumped me. I did get it started. Never show something, it was unfinished work. And it was never show fools unfinished work. This one I don't have time to explain to you. It's, it's from the Bible and they jumbled up the, the, you know all the words, but the viewer has to put, this, has to put the sentences together. Neruda. This one I do have to explain to you, because only because when I saw it at first, it, it, I realized it's not, graphically it's not very well designed. And then, and I couldn't read it. And then so the, the designer, she said, well, I'll read it for you. And I think when you hear it, you, be, you probably realize that maybe it's an appropriate design. I know that you believe that you understand what you think I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. So it sounds like two lovers quarreling. So when you look at that confused sentence and you look at this confused design, I think it's appropriate. And it's a quote by Robert Frost. This again, a very simple thing by, by uh, she, uh, everything is death while it lives. The dead trees by themselves would have spoken death, but the fact that the designer turned the trees upside down was a, a nice touch, one of those little extra things that you get. It is always impossible until it's done, Nelson Mandela. So again, this is enhanced quotation. Then you get something like your Mick, Mick Jaggers, lose your dreams, you might easily lose your mind. Morrissey. Someone mentioned yesterday, think outside the box. It's a risk to love. What if it doesn't work out? Oh, but what if it does? Don't think it, think it. There's safety in numbers, very cute, very nice. This is 
a strange one. I don't know if it's ironic or they're sincere. <laughs> this one should appeal to you. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. <clears throat> Experimental typography. I do have to explain this one. At Yale Graduate School, we have a visiting instructor, <laughs> Dieter Rowe, very famous, I think he passed away a few years ago. And I forget what the project was, but I remember when we brought in our designs, he took one look at them and he was not impressed. In fact, he, he took a newspaper, he took a razor blade, and he, he said, I can make better designs if I just take this razor blade and he cut some squares out of the newspaper, threw them on the table, and said, any of these are more interesting than anything I see here. Well, I have to admit he was right. The designs graphically were very, very interesting. So years later, when I was teaching, I decided that I would turn it into a project. So I took this, I took some magazines, I would just throw it down on the magazine, and I would cut out whatever, whatever showed up. So I would get hundreds of these squares, just odd, odds and ends like this. I would give them to the students, and I would say, pick any, pick any, it's okay, pick any two or three, and I want you to keep the integrity of the design, and I want you to turn that into something, give it meaning. It is fascinating what, what they came up with, and I'll show you some examples of it. And again, these are second year students. That little scrap added panic with, with Photoshop, added the, it opened the mouth, did all kinds of things. And, and these are, if I had given them a, an assignment and said, okay, I want you to work with panic, you would never come up with something like that. They would come up with something, but I don't think it would be half as interesting. So when you think of the copy that they add, and to enhance the design, it just taps into a certain part of the brain, which I think enhances their design skills. Plus, every project that I'm showing you now, the students enjoyed. They really enjoyed not only learning, but the results from the, uh, from the projects. Lighten up. This again was, was a, a very, very nice solution. And, and not just adding the X's, which mean kisses, but smudging it a little bit, like, you know. Go to your desire, don't hang around here. I, I don't know if they make these up, or if they got them from some book or a song or whatever it is, but again, it just, it just enhances it. First it was Titanic. This is, again, students have sometimes an odd sense of humor. They took that little thing, and they have this, anything can go wrong, and they have them cutting, cutting the leg. It's bizarre. <laughs> Don't waste a minute not being happy. If one window closes, run to the next window. The next one is similar to that. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. Some of these we don't have time to read. This is a nice thought. No one looks back on their life and remembers the nights they had plenty of sleep. <laughs> and again, this is from that little scrap with a gun. You got a dead bird at the bottom. There are so many fragile things, after all. People break easily, and so do dreams and hearts. I like the way they bent the type. Another nice one. Never grow up, it's a trap. <laughs> Nobody can hide. This is sweet. In the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take. I don't know why the image is appropriate, but for some strange reason, I find it very appropriate. Just, just with that woman in the middle of the field. What if? And this one I kept only because they turned it into like a Mondrian. The typography, the type is a little bit busy, but again, the, the extent. Look at the extent this student went to. They took this little scrap, they put the Queen of England, they put in Bugs Bunny, a sofa. I mean, they furnished, they furnished the whole space, but they kept the integrity of the design. Less is more. And again, this is a very simple one. They took away all the background, left the woman with a cup of coffee, and just said, calm down, loosen up, you know, relax. This is a song by Campbell, West Virginia. This, you can't quite see it, 
Never go to sleep angry. Stay awake and get revenge. <laughs> There's a whole philosophy here. Feel free to experiment. I love this one. I don't know if you can read it. It's so nice to wake up in the morning when you're all alone and not have to tell someone you love them when you don't love them anymore. <laughs> Everything passes. Don't attach. Lighten up. Oh, let, yeah, so, again, I'm glad they didn't even read the project, I'll tell you that. This again is, 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 is this is a ship, I think it's a Titanic, and, and they just simply added the Morse code, SOS, 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 save our ship. I think it's, it's, it's totally, I wouldn't change the dot. This one makes me laugh. They took this scrap, you have this diamond bracelet or something. She built a whole world of space and it said, who the hell are you? <laughs> now this one is a story. Nobody, nobody could solve this one. And finally, I think she came up with a solution. Thanks, Jim, for the great project. I give up. <laughs> and I, I'd like to give this to the whole class, because I do want a solution to this. And even the teachers, and no, nobody could come up with a solution. And it's so graphic that it's personal poster. This came about at the Cooper Union when, when uh, I would have the students. Oh, when I had, to, when I had, it's fine. When I had the students do the semester's work, I had them put together everything onto a CD disc. And then when they did the CD disc, I said, I want you to do a cover for the CD disc. It was a mini portfolio. And I want you to put a cover on that, and I wanted to have, to express your personality. At Cooper Union, it had to say Typo 1. I want the name of the school. I want your signature. I want your name. I want the year and the school. And when I give it at workshops, I, instead of putting Typo 1, we put designing the type. So I'll show you some. What I love about this is that, for me, I mean, people who have grandchildren, you know, they love to have all these pictures of their grandchildren. But for me, these are students, not just names. These are students that I, I worked with, and, and they have meaning to me. So I have this wonderful collection of, of, of not only their, um, you know, their faces, their names. So I'll go through. And again, it's, it's supposed to express your personality, and it's wonderful how they, they, how well they do that. This guy cloned himself. She, she uh, just a re reflection. It's very quiet, soft, elegant. This is very lovely, just running through the hall there. When I show these, I said, which one do you remember? It's always her in the bathtub for some reason. <laughs> Very nice, like Alice in Wonderland. Okay, and the, this project, which was to remind the students that everything doesn't have to come off the computer. You can do wonderful graphic effects just going back to old technologies. So for this one, I had to do a ransom note, just tearing up magazines and doing the whole thing graphic. And you get graphic effects that I don't think you can get off the computer. And some of them, um, some of them I, I, could almost, I could almost see, like, I'll show you one particular one, it could almost be a huge painting. Dear Grandma, make supper or kiss your dentures goodbye. <laughs> but if you look at it graphically, it's, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> this is the one that I was saying that I think that I think could be could be a huge a huge painting.
Okay, what, what uh, the reason I'm showing this is I mentioned because of time, you didn't have time to read all the all the uh, all the text, and I just wanted to let you know that there are two uh, websites. Designingwithtype.com is the original one, but 15 years old now. It has projects from all over the world. Designingwithtype.com slash five is a companion to the book. And if you go on that, you'll get uh, many of these uh, examples of, of this. And there's also the, there's also the, uh, there's an ebook version of the Designing with Type. I prefer that students use the text type. There's something about talking about 12 point type and 10 point type on a laptop. Uh, it's not the same as seeing it printed. And it's just something, the, the, the print book is much better. I did not design the ebook. In fact, we're, we're trying to negotiate with the publisher to do a better job on the ebook. But it is, it is available. Now, I just want to have one last thing that the, um, in closing, let me say that we as graphic designers have come, come a long way from the prehistoric twigs marking trails, and no one knows where all this may lead. But I do believe that wherever that may be, that you and other graphic designers will be a major part of this journey. Thank you very much.